We are starting onion seeds today so that you can actually get nice big onions and not these little tiny onions unless you just decide to harvest them early because you want pearl onions. Last year I had a pitiful onion harvest and so this year I am determined that I am going to do all of the steps so that we have a fabulous onion harvest again. So the first step is making sure that you are picking the right type of onion for where you live. With onions, a little bit different than a lot of our other crops, especially in the vegetable world. You have long day onions, short day onions, and neutral day onions. And if you get the wrong variety based upon your geographical location, then you are really going to struggle with your onions. So I live in the north, so I need to make sure that I am doing long day onions because the way that they grow is determined by how many daylight hours you have in the spring and the summer months. So here being north, we're just a little bit south of the Canadian border. We definitely need to have long day onions. And you can do a quick Google search and look for where you're at, for where you're going to fall, for which variety, but just make sure that you're picking the right ones. Then secondly, once you've figured out, am I long day neutral or short, you want to make sure if storing said onions is something that you wanna do and not just fresh eating, then you wanna make sure that you are picking storage varieties of onions. So this, even though it's a little tiny, it's like the cutest little baby onion ever, this onion was harvested in August, and at the time of this filming, we are in February. And you can see it's storing just great, even though it's super tiny, which I, I'll talk about why this poor little onion and a lot of my onions this year are smaller caliber, because it's just like almost a miniature. <laughs> um, but <clears throat> you wanna have long type storage onions because these will sit on, I have just a couple that I pull out and keep in the kitchen because I always need onions. And then the rest of them I keep back in our back pantry, which is out of direct daylight, relatively cool, um, not humid, not getting steam and different heat you know, from cooking in the kitchen. But I will have our storage onions will last me, I've had them go at least nine months, some of them almost 12 months before they'll sprout and then it's time to be harvesting the rest of the new crop of onions. So some of my favorites are Patterson, which is a yellow storage onion. Um, I'm trying this year, this is a new one. It is a red wing red onion. Typically your red and white onions don't have as long of storage, but this one is supposed to be a storage variety. I haven't grown it to store it yet myself, so it's one that I'm gonna be trying out. And then I'm very excited about this one. This is called Newberg and it is a long storage onion as well. This one has been grown in my area, so Pacific Northwest, typically a cooler summer climate, wet, and so I'm excited to try this one because if I can find, or if you can find a seed company that is growing and seed saving their own seeds, they're not just buying them and repackaging them, which some seed companies do. Um, this one is Siskiyou Seeds. They're out of Oregon. I'm in Washington State, so very similar climate. I have found that getting seeds from, if you can, you can't always find one that's very specific to your area, do some searching but I have found that they are acclimated and they usually grow better for me than ones that I get from just a large company that's growing you know, in a different climate that's not exactly the same as mine. So I'm really excited to try the Newberg. That one is new for me. But in the past, both uh, Patterson and Copra have been excellent long storage varieties for us, as well as a blush variety. And I got it from Dixondale Onions when I was ordering sets and not starting them from seed on the blush. I didn't find a seed source for the blush, so I may or may not still order some sets from them and then do some seed saving on them so I have my own seeds. But this year we're gonna start with these. Now, one of the things on when you're seed starting, I love to just reuse containers for onions specifically. I like a where I can just fill this all with soil. It's not individual cells. And there's some decent depth here. So this is, oh, it's probably about two and a half inches. This one is closer to three, maybe four. So these I like rather than doing like egg cartons or the little individual pots or like soil blocks because onions you need to start. I have found most advice will tell you 10 to 12 weeks 
before your last average frost date in the spring because onions are a cool weather crop and that means that we can actually plant them out before the last frost date. But I have found when starting them from seed, which we're doing today, that the onion little bulb, if you only do 10 to 12 weeks, it's still relatively small. There's not much of a bulb. It's much smaller than if you order sets in. And so sets of where they have started them, then they've stopped the process just long enough that they go into a little bit of dormancy so that they can ship them. But then you're actually planting a bulb in the ground and it will grow for you rather than doing it from seed like we're doing now, because you typically do have to seed start. So I found that 16 weeks instead of 10 to 12 weeks gives me a larger bulb and is closer to the growth um, habits of the sets when I get them in. Otherwise, I have smaller onions, not quite this small. This one, we had weird inclemental weather this year, past year, and it really affected my onion growth. We had like 120 degree Fahrenheit days, triple digit temps for almost a full week, and it seemed to really stunt the onions, and I had a pitiful onion harvest. So this year, I'm determined that we're going to have a good onion, onion harvest again. So I'm starting mine from seed this year, um, rather than just depending all upon ordering sets. So here is a potting soil mix. I'll link to that. You do, when you're seed starting indoors, wanna use some type of seed starting mix. I don't just bring soil in from outdoors. One, I don't wanna deal with gnats, the little soil gnats or white flies that can be in soil outside. Um, we will link to some of my other seed starting videos, but you also don't wanna use that because it's too compact. And when you're in a container, it's not the same as having the regular, when, like when it's in the ground, because you don't have, matric pressure is different as well as gravity and surrounding soil. So the soil, whoops. See, I was gonna do this on a tray to try to keep all the dirt off my kitchen counter, but we're gonna end up with some dirt, but that's all right. So you wanna make sure that you are using one, I know this sounds weird, but sterile soil meaning if it's bagged, then it is sterile, just meaning that it doesn't have any of the pathogens in it that we have from in the ground, because we don't wanna deal with any type of bacteria and fungal disease, especially um, like wilt and dampening off disease. All of those are diseases that are in soil, especially garden soil, and can really affect your new baby seedlings, especially when they're indoors. So. You can buy obviously potting soil, which is what I do. You can make your own where you buy different components that you're so that you're making sure it's nice and loamy um, and not too compact or waterlogged, et cetera. And you can also take soil if you wanna make your own and mix it and you can put it in the oven and sterilize it. But I have found for seed starting, I would just rather buy a bag where it's already done for me, quite honestly. Um, and save all of my efforts for other things. So I'm just kind of breaking up. See, there's some little clumps in here. So we're just gonna break those up. Now, when you're starting onion from seed, onions tend to have a lower germination rate than a lot of your other seeds like tomatoes or peppers or things that you may be seed starting indoors. So I always like to over sow. And the other thing that's different with onion seed than most of your other garden seed is it has a relatively short shelf life. So if you purchased onion seeds last year and used those and you had some left over and you go to use them again the year two, oftentimes your germination rate is even less and people get really frustrated not realizing that onions are one of the, probably the, of all the seeds, especially like vegetable gardening seed wise, they only really have a one year shelf life. So if you've got onion seed that's more than one year old, Go ahead and plant it if you've got it, but don't be surprised if hardly any of them actually germinate and grow for you. You can see they're relatively, they're relatively small. So these are the, the Newberg onion. So you can see these are really, they're small seeds. They're kind of about similar to like carrot size. They're pretty little. So I know that I can go through and actually thin these out. And these are not their final resting place because I'll be transplanting, transplanting these and you just pull them all the way out from the soil when it comes to transplanting time and I can thin them there. So I can get multiple onion seeds started in here. So I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna do about three rows. And I know it's very hard to see because these are black seeds going on black soil. And I'm just gonna do those a little bit densely. 
and I'll worry about thinning them after they've sprouted and started to grow. So now I'm gonna do a full two rows of the yellow Patterson just because I've grown these ones for many, many years and I know that these store awesome. So I wanna have more of my storage onions that I know will store well than I do of these newer variety, which is the red ones. So I'm just gonna do one and a half rows of the red and do full. These ones you can see a little bit better too. So we've got our seeds in and you wanna have them about a quarter inch deep. So not, not too deep, but they're not surface sewn. And then about a half an inch to an inch apart of your rows inside when you're doing kind of like these little pallet seed starting. Now these are all non-pelleted seeds. They do make pelleted seeds. They look like little white BBs. And those are good if you're sowing really, really large areas because they're a little bit larger and so you can see where you've placed them. However, I have tried pelleted versions in the past and none of the pelleted versions actually germinated for me. When I was seed starting, the non-pelleted version, which is what we have here, they germinated by day four. I waited 14 days for the pelleted versions to germinate and they never did germinate. So I don't know, maybe I got a bad batch, but I don't purchase the pelleted versions anymore due to my first experience trying to seed start with them. So we have got these um, at a quarter inch deep and of course we need to have moisture when we're seed starting. So I have one of these little, um, it's actually for my house plants, but it works well as a sprayer to evenly get the surface moist. Well, it works well until you come on camera and then it decides to stop working. So now that we have our soil nice and saturated with water there and moist, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna take my finger and just fill in the top of my little trenches here. This also gives me a feel too, like I can feel this, this side is a little bit drier. Um, so I will give that one more spray on this side. All right, so this is why I really love to use seed starting and reuse these lettuce. This is actually a lettuce container. So I don't feel quite so guilty when we buy lettuce in the middle of winter if I don't have enough going in the high tunnel. But this just comes closed and creates a perfect greenhouse environment. So it doesn't dry out as fast. It keeps it nice and moist, which is key during the germination phase. And then this one is actually I will be honest, my husband bought the kids store-bought donuts. So this is a donut tray, but at least it's going to a good purpose afterwards. <laughs> I can't say it was necessarily a good purpose in the eating, but you know. So these, they don't technically need light when like grow light. Let me preface that. I wouldn't necessarily put these in a dark closet without any light, but we don't have to worry about grow light on these during the germination phase. What we wanna make sure is that the top of the soil never ever dries out during germination. And this is true for all seed starting, but also especially true for our onion seeds. So I'm gonna actually go and place these by our wood stove just because that is a warm area and I'm not gonna keep these on the island in my kitchen <laughs> for the next couple of weeks as we go through germination phase but I'm gonna go and put these over by the wood stove. That is gonna be a nice area. I can keep an eye on them and anytime they start to dry out, I don't know if you can see, but we're actually starting, like the little greenhouse effect I was talking about. You can see moisture already starting to gather on the top of these lids and, and that wasn't there from overspray as I close them. So it just creates like this perfect little environment for seed starting and then I can use these over and over again. So we're gonna go put these by the wood stove. So these guys, I'm just gonna sit <clears throat> right here, which is pretty close to the stove, but they're not gonna get knocked um, when I'm putting wood in it because it'll be from that side. So once these guys have germinated, we pull the tops off and then put them under the grow light. They're gonna grow, their little green stalks look very similar to green onions. And when those get um, above four inches, so usually about 16 inches tall, you wanna give them a little haircut. So you're just gonna trim it and you're gonna keep those green stalks about four inches tall. And that is going to help them, one, be manageable. Otherwise, you're gonna have this huge thing of really tall falling over, getting all tangled, wispy green stalks. <clears throat> and if you keep them tre tri trimmed, not trimmed, trimmed, 
<laughs> to about four inches, there's still enough that they're able to grow and that the bulb will continue to form, the little tiny bulb, um, and the plants will be just fine, but they will be much more manageable for you. And then of course you'll want to harden them off as we do with any seeds that have been started inside and get them planted out at the appropriate time. So I have this video that goes through grow lights that you can check out more in depth. And I also have a complete seed starting, ultimate seed starting guide. If you've got more questions and need more in depth on seed starting on the website, so you can grab that link below and go further there.